when I read the readings for this particular confirmation, uh, I, I found myself uh, in a very special way saying uh, they are special, very special readings. Uh, and they really uh, challenge us in a very real way. Uh, and you know, I, I have to admit, uh, the Gospel especially says so much about the, the call that Jesus Christ has given to each of us. Uh, and, and he says to us very personally that, that we really are to take up our cross and follow him. Uh, and every time I read that, it gives me pause. I don't know what it does for you, but it gives me pause every single time. And, and part of the question is, what does he mean by that? You know, what does he mean by that? And for you that are about to be confirmed, saying to you, take up your cross and follow him. What's he really talking about? Uh, and I have to admit, there's been times when I've, I've uh, wondered, you know, as life unfolds, uh, what is God saying in a particular moment, or what God, what is God really speaking to us about? And especially when there's difficulty or challenge or confusion or whatever uh, is going on in our lives. And, you know, to hear uh, Jesus really saying to us, he wants to have that kind of a personal relationship with us that we are able to walk with him on the way to Calvary. We are able to journey with him on the way to Calvary as we take up our cross. So the cross of Jesus for us sometimes is expressed in something physical, yes. But more times than not, it's really about faith. It's really about following Jesus in faith or witnessing to Jesus in faith. That's really what it comes down to. And the, the words he says in the Gospel are really quite breathtaking. He says that unless we take up our cross and follow Him, we do not have life in Him. Wow! Wow! That we're called to walk in faith with Him. So part of the, part of the invitation is to really recognize who He is. And we heard of the prophet Isaiah, and it's really wonderful. He is the shoot of Jesse. In other words, all of history is being unfolded in him. And that it is the Spirit of God that's coming upon him. And that same Spirit is given to you tonight. That same Spirit that was given to Jesus Christ is given to you tonight by him. By him. I mean, it's a wild moment. It really is. It's, it's, it's an amazing moment in which God's love is poured out to you and saying to you, you are so important to me, I love you so much that I'm going to bless you with the Spirit of my Son, Jesus Christ. And that Spirit coming upon you. So, how can we carry our cross? It's only in the Spirit of God, in the end. It's only in the Spirit of God. Because otherwise, if we try to do it by ourselves, we fall and we fail. But with the Spirit of God, we really are able to do almost anything, really, in God's name. And especially to witness to Him in those very difficult or challenging moments of faith in which we're called to. You know, I read your letters, and, and I'm not going to share different things in your letters, and I appreciate, I mentioned to you before the Mass that I appreciate your letters. Um, but this moment is, is really meant for you to embrace what you have said in your letters. To say, I really want the love of Jesus Christ poured into my heart, and I really want the gifts of the Spirit to come down upon me. So, let's drop back into what I was telling you earlier before the Mass. You're going to need your holy cards, so in case you have a brain freeze, so the gifts of the Spirit that you're praying for right now are
that we're praying for you, that those gifts are yours. Let's do a check. Community of faith, those of them who received confirmation, raise your hands. Raise your hands if you received confirmation. You look around, you can see the priests better have their hands up or in their deep trouble. <laughs> <laughs> they do. Okay. So for us, we've received the gift of the Holy Spirit already. Which gift of the Spirit are you praying for the most tonight? Which gift of the Spirit do you need? Wisdom in your life or in your marriage, understanding, knowledge, or counsel that God is advising us literally on His way, or the spirit of fortitude, the spirit of, of piety, the spirit of the fear of the Lord. And for each of you, we are praying tonight that you get hit with all seven gifts of the Spirit. Every one of them. That you come out of this church smoking. <laughs> and that's how wide your heart needs to be. Letting God's Spirit truly end you. Letting God's Spirit truly drive you. One of the, one of the readings that was chosen for tonight is St. Paul's letter to the Galatians. It's such a special letter to the church and to us because it really speaks about the Spirit. And he says, if you live in the Spirit, you will not be gratified by the desires of the flesh. Wow. So where's our attention? Not on our bodies. Our attention is on God. Our attention is on God's presence in our lives. That's where our attention is. And, and so the Spirit is really a gift of God to us and meant to change everything. So tonight's really meant to change everything. Now they go through a pretty good list here. They call this all kinds of things which existed in his day and unfortunately still exist now. So if we find ourselves in a moment of anger, fury, or a moment of frustration, or a moment in which we are just overwhelmed by whatever is going on, those can be invitations of the Spirit, but they also are a sign to us that we're called into something more. More. In other words, as life unfolds, so does the Spirit of God unfold for us. And so the fruits of the Spirit are a sign the Spirit being with us. So, where's my wonder student that had the fruits of the Spirit? There she is. She's, she's hiding underneath her mask. So she's going to tell us the gifts of the Spirit. Now she's panicking. I love it. Sorry to do that too. So, the gifts of the Spirit. Love.
receive the sacrament of confirmation, open your hearts. Let the Spirit of God come upon you and fill you with his gifts so that you may 